our chief guest, uh, Professor Shahid Mahdi, Vice President of India Council for Cultural Relations. He will address uh, Professor, the <coughs> chief guest's address. Uh, he is a distinguished, uh, he's had a distinguished career, as most of you know, uh, in Indian Foreign Service, represented India at the United Nations, uh, and then from 2000 to 2004 inclusive, he was also Vice Chancellor of the Jama Melia Islamia uh, University. Uh, we are uh, greatly privileged and honored to have him today address us as the chief guest. Professor Mahdi. Professor Mohammed Mia, Professor Poor Shariati, Professor Mushir Al Hassan, Professor Arjumand, Professor Zilli, and uh, the spirit behind uh, this whole event, Professor Mohammed Mia, Vice Chancellor of this university and his colleague, Dr. Salma Farooqi. If you had seen the uh, printed invitation, I was supposed to give some opening remarks, but um, So these are some of the concluding remarks, okay. Now, first of all, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to the organizers and participants in this important conference. It has been in the making for some time, and I'm happy that it's taking place in Hyderabad and in Manu. As you know, this university is named after Morana Abul Kalam Azad. A stalwart of our freedom movement and also the founder of Indian Council for Cultural Relations. That's a very happy coincidence. Morana <coughs> was steeped in Indo-Persian culture. And his memory was a veritable storehouse of the best in Persian poetry with which he studied his Urdu writings. India and Persian civilizations are two among the few whose influence and impact reached far beyond their geographical limits. The impact of Indian civilization and wisdom is evident in Southeast, Far East, and many parts of Central Asia, and even China. And Persian civilization reach in the West and Central Asia is also far and wide. India represents a confluence and our contribution to the enrichment of Persian can hardly be overemphasized. No wonder India among the few countries which have the richest collection of Persian manuscripts in, for example, Khodabakhsh Library, Rada Library, <coughs> Moran Azad Library of my alma mater, Aligarh Muslim University, and Sadar Jang Museum in the host city of Hyderabad. Persian became the language of administration and literature much before the Mughals. Amir Khosro, 
in his lifetime was recognized as a major poet in the Persian world. Incidentally, Amir Khosrow thinks that his pronunciation of Persian is more authentic than the Iranians' pronunciation. Okay. This is what he thought. Uh, and we have followed Amar Khosrow all along. You see. Um, with the establishment of the Mughal Empire, especially after the return of Humayun from Iran, where he was in exile for several years, the interaction in particularly fine arts like painting, calligraphy, and architecture was further accelerated. The Mughal patronage acted as a magnet for the best from Iran. Urfi, Naziri, who is buried in Ahmedabad, as you might be knowing, Talib Amuli, Saib Isfahani, Abu Talib Kaleem, anybody you name in that period, they are all attracted to India. I think there is a paper on the causes of migration. The cause of migration might have been some sort of religious so-called persecution, but mainly it was the patronage which was being extended by the Mughals, the fine arts. Now we have an unbroken tradition of uh, contribution to Persian literature, starting much before the Mughals, from 11th century. The first name that we read is Abul Faraj Rooney, born in Lahore, and then Masood Saad Salman. Now from Rooney, from Rooney, that is 11th century to 20th century, that is Akbar. From Rooney to Bedel to Ghalib to Shibli to Akbar, there is a continuous chain of uh, excellence in Persian poetry. And I must say that some of the sensibilities that we find in the Persian poetry produced here are really unique. I'll just quote one or two couplets in my Indian pronunciation, you see. For example, Buhari Shah Karandar is about early 14th century from Panipat, very close to Rumi's time. I khizr chashma hawa ke bara mi nazi. I khizr chashma hawa ke bara mi nazi. Bood ya katra katra ze dur de tahe pa maana hai maa. Well, look at the spirit, you see. Bedil, completely new sensibilities. He has not yet been given the place he deserves, although he is worshipped in Afghanistan and Central Asia, and now there is a revival of Bedil in Iran also. Ghalib, Paya ke qaida ya asma be garda neem, qaza be gardish e ratle gara be garda neem. I mean the kind of, what should I say, effervescence that you find in this poetry. Or Iqbal, who is a poet of the Azmat-e Alam. Naradat ishq ke khuni jigare paida shud, husn larzayt ke sahab nadare paida shud. Iqbal. Or the dialogue between man and God. God says, Jaharaz yak abu gilla freedom to Iran o tatar o zanga freedom. Manas haak pola de nab a freedom to shamshiro tiro tafanga freedom. 
صبر آفریدی نہالے چمن را او قفص ساختی تائرے نغمہ زندہ This is God Before I give you the reply of man دس واز گاڈ جہاں راز یک آب و گل آف ریدم تو ایران و تاتار و زنگ آف ریدی واٹ ڈز مین رپلائی رسپونس تو شب آف ریدی چراغ آف ریدم سفال آف ریدی آیاغ آف ریدم بیابان و کوسر و راغ آف ریدی خیابان و گلزار و باغ آف ریدی منانم کہ از سنگ آئینہ سازم منانم کہ از زہر نوشینہ سازم اور اس نے نیو وائز ان پرشن امرجنگ فرم انڈیا اٹس ای پیٹی دیٹ لارڈ آف انڈین پویٹری ہیز بین ڈسمسڈ ایز سب کے ہندی اینڈ آئی تھنک We need to give uh, more attention to what they have said and for the Sabak Hindi to find its rightful place in the corpus of Persian literature. India's contribution to Sufism and Sufi literature in Persian is enormous. The first manual on Sufism in Persian language, Kashful Mahjub by Ali bin Usman Hajveri was written in Lahore, followed by a large number of treatises and hagiographies in subsequent centuries, many of which were produced in Dakan. So also I would like to mention that perhaps Now, now we find Rumi everywhere, Rumi, the best-selling poet in the uh, U.S. I'm sure. But appreciation of Rumi in India is much diverse, more voluminous, older, I must say. Rumi was perhaps the mo more appreciated and studied in India than in many other countries. Enormous numbers of commentaries on the Masnavi were written in India. And it should also be noted that Rumi's dialogues, you can say, Fi Ma Fi, was discovered and published for the first time from India. I will not go into more details. Now we have been hearing about the travelogue. And, uh, Just I want to share with you that uh, this is uh, the uh, time of celebration of uh, 151st year of Tagore, our national poet. So let me conclude this by uh, saying a few things about Tagore and Iran. In 1923, he visited Iran. And this travelogue, in a complete form, has been published in English translation only recently. Mostly it was written in Bengali and part of it were translated. The literature and art of Persia are reported to have made deep impression on aristocratic families of Bengal, including Tagore's family. Devendranath. It is reported that poetry of Hafiz was read with much devotion by Devendranath. And some have seen Persian cultural influence in the development of art styles of Bengali school by Abindranath and Gangendranath. So uh, Tagore's travelogue 
is in contrast to those of many Europeans of colonial era, era and even our own times. See, he was not like James Morier, who wrote the Haji Baba of Swan, and uh, Lord Curzon happened to be a great admirer of, of uh, James Morier, and the way he has treated Iranians' characters in his uh, fact and fiction is really a shame. Now Tagore shows, in contrast, great deal of empathy and understanding of Persian people, Pers Persian people, its history and culture, which is a far cry, as I've just mentioned, from the caricaturist approaches of many European travelers and writers about Iran. <coughs> Persia, I'm quoting Tagore, when hit, gets hurt, but does not break down. This is what I'm quoting from Tagore. Persia has had always the powerful inner resilience to spring back to life again and again. This must be a record unmatched perhaps in any country. Maybe he was trying to find some similarity between India and Persia because India also has been hit again and again and is sprung back. Now in conversation with uh, uh, Mr. Farooqi, who was the brother of then foreign minister, he said that he was very close to Persian Sufi and mystic poets, except, this is very significant, that his idiom was modern. I'm just quoting Tagore. He added that to accept Modern European thoughts does not necessarily mean that we do so at the cost of abandoning our traditional culture." Unquote. At the tomb of Hafiz, he wished, he made a secret wish, because he wanted to see the fall, you see. Um, he wished that within quotes, our India should be freed from the strangulation of blind faiths that paraded in the name of religion, unquote. And he asked for a fall from the Wane Hafiz. And the couplet which emerged says, I'm not quoting the full one, have faith in God and the right path will show up. This is the fall he, he got. He adds, quote, friends were amazed in noticing the compatibility between my wish and the implied answer. And then adds, I had a distinct feeling that after a lapse of many centuries, sitting near this tomb was another wayfarer who had found bond with Hafiz. Thank you. <laughs>